Welcome to another video by IB Blueprint. Today we discuss the foolproof way to draw Lewis diagrams. So why are Lewis structures so important? Well, to do well in the IB chemistry topic, particularly for the bonding topic, being able to draw Lewis structures is crucial. For simple compounds such as carbon dioxide, oxygen or methane, this can be easy. However, for more difficult compounds, this process can be fairly confusing, e.g. for SO42-, NO3-, CO32-, or NO2+. So we will go through a simple and straightforward five-step method that you can use for almost all structures. Step 1. Count total valence electrons plus or minus the charge. 2. Draw the diagram with all single bonds. 3. Assign 6 electrons to all outer atoms except hydrogen. 4. Assign remaining electrons as lone pairs. And finally, minimize formal charge by assigning double bonds. So, let's look at step 1. Counting the total valence electrons plus or minus the charge. This first step is to work out how many electrons there should be in total in your Lewis structure. So for the sulfate ion, the total electrons is calculated like this. Sulfur is 6 valence electrons. There are 4 oxygens, each with 6 valence electrons, so we get 24. 6 plus 24 is 30. And then you add on the 2 more electrons for a 2 minus charge, and you will get a total of 32 electrons. Next, we draw a diagram with all single bonds. It should usually be fairly obvious which atom will go into the center. For SO4 2 minus, it would be sulfur surrounded by four oxygen atoms. And so we start with all single bonds here. It should look something like this. Step three, we add six valence electrons to all outer atoms except hydrogen, because hydrogen will only have two maximum in its outer shell. So we add six valence electrons or three electron pairs to the outer atoms. For SO4 2 minus, it should look something like this. Step 4, we assign the remaining electrons as non-bonding pairs. So let's look at how many electrons there should be, and we did that, there should be 32. So now we compare this to how many we've assigned in this Lewis structure. We need to make sure that all the electrons have been accounted for. So let's see how many we've assigned in our Lewis diagram. Remember, single bonds count as two electrons. So we have around each oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. and for each of the four single bonds, two electrons. In total, we have four times six, which equals to 24, plus four times two, which is eight, which totals 32. Since there is no, there is no deficiency of electrons, we have no non-bonding pairs. Now, if all you wanted was the, sh the note on the shape and the angle, then you can stop here. Recall that whether it's a single, double, or triple bond, it still only counts as one negative charge center. So no matter what we do from here, if we assign double bonds, or triple bonds even, there will be four negative charge centers with no non-bonding pairs, meaning SO42- minus is regular tetrahedral with an angle of 109.5 degrees. But before we move on, let's look at the octet rule and some of the exceptions. For period 1, there will only be maximum 2 in its outer shell. Hydrogen can only form one bond. Period 2, you can only have a maximum of 8 in its outer shell, noting that boron will only form 3 bonds and will have 6 in its outer shell. For period 3, we can disobey this octet rule for certain atoms. For instance, for phosphorus, it can form 5 bonds, and sulfur can form 6 bonds. Now let's look at formal charge. Formal charge is defined as the number of valence electrons in a neutral atom minus the number of valence electrons assigned in the Lewis diagram. Since covalent bonding is sharing, each bond represents one electron per atom. So let's look at sulfur. If we haven't assigned any double bonds, let's look at what the formal charge currently is. For oxygen, we have six in its neutral state. In here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so that's negative 1 formal charge. 6 minus 7 equals minus 1. For sulfur, we have 6 in its neutral state, but here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 single bonds. One electron belongs to sulfur in each. 
6 minus 4 equals plus 2. Now this is not 0. And what we want is to make it as close as possible to 0. So what have we done here? Well, step 1, we minimize formal charge without violating the octet rules mentioned in 5.0.1. And this is done by assigning double bonds. So as we can see here, there's a double bond here and a double bond here. So let's look at what the new formal charges are. And noting that it's often not possible to make all the formal charges equal to zero. For the sulfurs, for the oxygen attached with the double bond, we have one, two, three, four, five, six assigned in its lower structure, and six minus six equals zero. So this is minimized. This oxygen, however, there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attached. So it's six minus seven equals a neg one. Notice here that to assign a double bond, we take the electrons from the oxygen, not from the sulfur, given the sulfur has no electrons left. Same with this. We've taken a double bond from a, a, a pair of electrons from the oxygen and turned that into a double bond. Sulfur now has a formal charge of zero because it has one, two, three, four, five, six bonds, meaning six electrons assigned into this valence structure. 6 minus 6, which equals to 0. So, in summary, step 1, count total valence electrons plus or minus the charge. Draw the diagram with all single bonds. Assign 6 electrons to all outer atoms except hydrogen. Assign remaining electrons as lone pairs. And finally, minimize the formal charge without violating any of the rules mentioned. Thank you for listening to this tutorial by IB Blueprint. We hope this has been helpful to your IB studies.